This lecture would be about uh, dropout and batch normalization. First, we would be discussing about dropout and then we would be discussing about batch normalization. So, I have made three slides. Let's look into that. So, uh, deep neural networks have, with a large number of parameters are very powerful machine learning systems. We all know that. However, uh, overfitting is a serious problem in such networks. Dropout is a technique for addressing this problem. So, I took the paper of dropout and uh, pasted some figures out here. So, the, this figure right here, this figure right here is a standard neural net. It has got two hidden layers and um, it is fully connected. And this figure B is after applying dropout. So what is happening is that these nodes are being dropped out and it's kind of a thinned network. So the crossed units have been dropped. So, uh, so what is happening is that you have to note here that we randomly drop out some fraction for less input units every step of training, every step of training, so that it makes harder for the network to learn those spurious patterns in the training data. Instead, it has to search for broad general patterns whose weight patterns tend to be more robust. So, by dropping out, what is happening is that you are trying to make it more generalizable. Why it it is also considered a kind of an ensemble network. Why? Because the predictions will no longer be made by one network, but instead by a committee of smaller networks. Why? Because you are dropping out and you are dropping out every step of training. So what is happening in every step of training, you are getting a different network, but that network is a smaller network. Individuals in the committee tend to make different kinds of mistakes but maybe right at the same time, making the committee as a whole better than any individual. So that's the philosophy. So there are smaller networks and it is a combination of smaller networks and it would make the network a little bit better. Now that goes on into the training time that whether the node is present or not will be with a probability p that is during the training time but during test time the node is always present but the weight is adjusted by p into w where p is a probability so that's it about the slide so let's see of how it is implemented in um, code so you can add dropout in keras you put the dropout layer just before the layer you want the dropout applied to. So you have put a dropout layer here and you apply 30% to the uh, next layer, the 30% dropout. So that completes dropout. Next is batch normalization. What is batch normalization? So we have seen that before we pass the data to the not network, we are normalizing the data. But maybe we should also normalize inside the network. So that this batch normalization layer is going to do. So what the batch normalization layer is doing is that it looks at each batch as it comes in. First, normalizing the batch with its own mean and standard deviation. Then also putting the data on a new scale with two trainable rescaling parameters. So there are two parts of it normalizing the batch with its own mean and standard deviation and then there is some scaling happening with two trainable rescaling parameters. So batch normalization it helps to make the training that is slow or unstable. It tends to make it a bit faster and it also helps to make it a bit um, stable. Uh, batch normalization is usually put um, after a dense layer and you can put all these things out here. 
So, this is after the dense layer. So, let us see about the batch normalization. Uh, we will continue with the red wine model. Uh, we will just repeat once more of what we are doing. This is a reading of the data. We are creating the training and the validation spits. 70 percent is training and 30 percent is validation. This is the model. Here we are seeing that we are having a dropout of 30 percent with a batch normalization and this is the dense layer which is coming in. So, this dense layer will have the dropout as well as the batch normalization. So, this is what it is and the rest of the things are the same. There is an Adam optimizer and the mean absolute error is a loss. We do a training curve. The history gets the training loss as well as the validation loss and we can so this completes our lecture about dropout and batch normalization two important concepts dropout and batch normalization it is very easy to implement these steps in keras thank you bye